Fender as a company knows electric guitars. And if we had to talk to someone or work with someone or partner with someone when we started this project that really knows the sonics of acoustic guitars and how to electrify and record those sounds, there was no one but Fishman. Tim and I have both known Larry for 30 plus years. And so the call to Larry was an easy one. His first call back was, you're nuts. You are nuts. This will never work. I'm like, awesome, are you in? When he told me what he wanted to do with a five-way switch and two knobs, I told him he's out of his mind. One of the things that might be a misnomer about the Acoustasonic is you can look at it and think maybe it's just a very thin-bodied acoustic guitar. Or maybe you think it's a guitar that has some technology in it where this is just kind of the shell or husk that the technology is doing all the work. And neither are true. Uh, this was a very symbiotically built guitar that is a harmonious balance between the guitar itself and the electronics. So neither are mutually exclusive. You can't take one and put it in a different guitar. It's not gonna work. You can't take the electronics out and have this work. The harmony occurs where you plug it in and then you have some of the electronics driving the sound, but it's also based upon what the guitar itself is also doing. So those two things are operating together and kind of live mixing a sound for you. Brian explained what kind of voices and features they're looking for. We had to design acoustic sounds that would reside in that guitar that were convincing and sound like a variety of classic full body instruments of different shapes and different woods. And I said, well, we can do most of it already. We have the acoustic imaging technology that we've been working with for 15 years, and we've learned a lot about how to emulate different body styles and things of that nature but there were some pretty stiff requirements on the electric side. This had to perform through a acoustic guitar amp or a full range PA. Of course, you can play any of the acoustic sonic series with a pedal switcher into electric amps, but it had the requirement that the player, maybe singer songwriter would use it on a gig, primarily acoustic, but for one or two tunes, go into the electric realm without having to change gear. And that's where it started. One of the things that was challenging is an instrument like this, there's so many ways to play it and what people do with an amplified acoustic guitar. Some people plug it into an electric amp, some people plug it into an acoustic amp, some people plug it into a DI or a PA or into a board. And there's so many ways to do that. So we also had to sonically sculpt it so there was no bad way or wrong way for people to play it. However, it's optimized really on the acoustic side for being played direct into a PA or direct into a board. It was a big challenge, but uh, we took a deep dive, got the whole team here involved, and that was the beginning. The Jazzmaster is the largest of the family. It has like the deepest voice, so it's not a baritone, but it certainly knows where baritones sing. And because of that, structurally, we had a completely different feel for the instrument, a completely different sonic experience, even acoustically. Before there'd been any pickup design done or anything, acoustically, it was a much different instrument. The larger size created different resonances than on the Telecaster or Stratocaster. So we had to adjust our acoustic models to make up for that because they really have to fit hand and glove to work well together. But. The guitar designers really took care of the, the major aspect of it. Uh, Tim Shaw and Brian Swordfinger, they painstakingly tuned this guitar from the bracing to the sound hole port to have the right resonant qualities. We never had to fight the instrument to get the electronics to work. So a fair question would be, okay, so what's it doing? Well, fair enough. We can answer that. At a basic level, this is a thin acoustic guitar. So it's a hollowed instrument with a braced spruce top on it. 
So the first thing that happens when I strum a chord is the string's energy tries to drive everything it can. It pushes on the bridge, loud enough to be heard on my lap, not loud enough to project halfway to Cleveland. This is our own proprietary and actually patented sound port that we use, which effectively works like a port of a speaker cabinet. So it helps take the sound and throw it out through the front of the guitar. There are three pickups in the guitar. The humbucker that you see, which was created just for this guitar, an understandal transducer, UST, or people call them piezo pickup, and a body sensor that's mounted under the top to the bridge plate that picks up all the vibration of the top. They don't work just by themselves. When you switch through here, it's not a simple, oh, I'm on this one, I'm on that one, I'm on that one, or I'm on, I'm on combinations. It's a variety of things in conjunction or in concert with the future electronics down here that allow us to deliver the wide variety of sounds. In the middle position of this switch, with the blend knob all the way turned down, we have an acoustic guitar voice, which has been tuned and curated for this instrument. As we turn the blend knob up, we're gonna bring in the body sensor. In doing so, all the taps and pops and anything we do to hit the instrument will come out and be live, just as they would be if you had a guitar with a microphone and we're tapping on it. In another position, we might have a dreadnought acoustic voice. As we pan the blend knob to the opposite direction, we might have a parlor guitar. So we go from the sound of a big guitar which this guitar is perfectly happy to do, to the sound of a much smaller, more focused guitar. And through that blend, we're actually knitting those two images. So we're, we've got this image, knitting with that image, becoming that image. And then in the final position, we've got the magnetic pickup through a signal chain, which includes, in its original form, an amplifier and speakers and that's a mic cabinet and a direct signal. And then we can actually increase the gain as if you're basically turning up the volume on an electric amp. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, 99% of it you're not seeing. We had to take our knowledge of everything we learned about all these variety of guitars over the years and build filter sets that emulated those guitars. So what you hear in here is not anyone's guitar, it's a image of what we've learned represents a type of guitar and a type of environment with a certain type of microphone, be it a large diaphragm, small diaphragm, ribbon, or so forth. And we developed a prototyping system that was a series of outside boxes so we could actually turn knobs and get things right in the sweet spot before we committed it to an onboard circuit. Because we had the larger body to start with, we were encouraged to take the instrument electrically and through the Fishman sound engine to different places than the other two guitars wanted to go. We knew we wanted a double coil pickup because so many of the jazz master players, a lot of these players had put humbuckers into it. So we knew we wanted a bigger, broader, crunchier voice. Oh, sick, wow. We kept changing what the pickup was capable of and ended up with a pickup which would be a quite high output pickup in a regular instrument. And again, it's listening to the instrument saying, okay, what do you want to do? And the guitar will basically tell you something and then you decide if you and the guitar are in agreement with that. Wow. That's cool, that's cool. It's like very resonant. Damn. Wow, okay. It's funny because then you don't you don't have to um you don't have to like do that thing where you like put your guitar to the amp <laughs> like like come on, come on, come on. And you're not sure if you can rely on it. That's pretty sick. Well, I'm excited about this one because so much of my music ranges from needing like fuzzy, overdriven electric guitar to like needing an acoustic guitar. So it's kind of exciting that we're just like switching between all these different pickups. I can have my electric give me a true sound of an acoustic, not like an acoustic electric necessarily, but changing between actual sounds that an electric guitar will give me and a full bodied acoustic guitar.
I followed the development of the product all along and was really amazed at how the team overcame every single kind of technical obstacle that was thrown their way. At the very last kind of sound check that we had uh, with the guitar, I knew I was going to hear some great acoustic tones because of all of the sophisticated modeling that we'd worked on with Fishman Electronics. What completely took me by surprise was the great electric tones that came out of it. So I kind of knew then that this was actually more than a great acoustic uh, guitar. It was actually something unique and different. It was a combination of technologies and approaches that we took to get the features that had been very clearly defined by Brian and Tim. And that was the, actually the, the best part of the project. They knew exactly what they wanted. We weren't guessing all the way. He said, I want a five-way switch. I want a blend control so I can pan between different sounds. And I want it to be absolutely usable without a user manual. Every sound had to work and it had to be totally intuitive. And that was a great place for us to be from a design point of view because our partner in this Fender really knew what they wanted.